Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. We talk about horror movies on this show. And one of the things we've been doing this year is we've been working our way through a couple of franchises because there's new films coming out in those franchises mm -hmm. next month. Uh, we're almost there, we're almost in October, which is, you know, naturally when they all want to release their new sequels. Uh, and one of those franchises, mm -hmm. of course, has been the Chucky franchise. Uh, we have done the first four films already. I'll make sure there's a link in the corner to the playlist of all the Chucky movie reviews. Uh, but this is going to be the fifth movie. This is going to be Seed of Chucky, which came out in 2004. Which I've only seen once before, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw this when I got the Blu-ray box set, when uh, mm -hmm. uh, Curse came out. That was I hadn't seen it up until that point. For whatever reason, I just never you know, seeked out Seed of Chucky. Um, so I saw it for the first time maybe like three years ago. Uh, and that's oh, the wow. only time I've seen it until now, which I've obviously I watched that again for this. Um, yeah. I think I I saw it when it came out in theaters, but I don't think I've seen it since then. Because uh, I, I never had like a box set or anything. So maybe I watched some of it on TV at some point, but other, otherwise, yeah, it's been a while for me. Yeah, so I'd, I'd forgotten most of what this movie was. Like there was like one or two things I remembered, but otherwise it was mostly like, okay, I remembered not liking it that much. I remembered <laughs> it being the weakest uh uh, you know, just in terms of my opinion, like some people would maybe argue Child's Play 3 is worse. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd probably say this one's a... And we'll obviously get into why. Uh, and even if I still feel that way, I might have, you know, seen it again and went, oh no, this is much better than I remember. This is this and this is that. And mm -hmm. oh my God, Britney Spears, like... Uh, <laughs> that so, turned me for a loop. So, yeah, I'd forgotten about that cameo. <laughs> that, that, that came, I was like, oh yeah, she's in the car. Um... So yeah, we'll start spoiler free as we usually do, and then we'll uh, give you warning before we go into spoilers about halfway through. Uh, so Tim, you watched? I mean, yeah. I suppose I, should, I was going to just ask the question, but I suppose I should explain the plot. But I feel okay. like the plot's so insane, given what you think it probably is, <laughs> that I'm going to save that, and I'm just going to okay. ask Tim first. So Tim, what, what do you mm -hmm. think uh, watching it again? Uh, Seed of Chucky. Uh, I actually like it. I. I'm not crazy about it. Like, I wouldn't say it's my favorite by far. Um, it's definitely, I don't know if it's the weakest, but uh, I don't know that it's it's kind of so crazy and bizarre <laughs> that it works for me. Um, okay. Yeah. It's like I, like, I wouldn't say it's a good movie, but it's a really, really weird, cheesy bit of fun. Uh, not something I'll be clamoring to, want to rewatch over and over again but i'm i'm glad it exists i guess <laughs> okay um i like i said it was probably my least favorite of the franchise now keep in mind this was before uh not that i'm saying curse is my, is my least favorite now but i'm just saying as you know i hadn't seen curse yet but this was already like my, my weakest the 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 franchise and i'd probably still hold that opinion although i do think it's closer than it was before like i don't think i think this and Child's play three are both really mixed movies for me, but for different reasons, for you know vastly different reasons. Like you know, like they don't share the same problems. They have completely separate problems that don't overlap at all. What I might say edges this one out for me is that Child's Play three didn't really do anything that different. Uh, That's while fair. this, yeah. like, e even if it's not a great movie, at least you got to give it to them that they really went out there and tried to do something pretty crazy of course yeah then the argument becomes like was that the right decision like what they decided <laughs> to do and that's maybe where i you know where my negativity comes in uh to, to yeah. a point so mm -hmm. so no I'm, I'm kind of mixed on it so what is the plot of Ch uh, not Charles, just <laughs> child's play five there uh, which it technically is uh but so first things first actually this came out in 2004 and i remembered this actually being a little bit newer than that i, I thought it was like 2007 2008 but it's 2004 yeah so, if you would have asked me i think i would have said yeah it would have been later yeah because this, this was actually only six years after braid so the gap between this and mm. then curse are actually much uh bigger because curse came out in 2013 yeah. so i i think i would have like uh moved bride up in my mind too like if you like I would have thought Bride was early two thousands, and then oh, you know. I, I mean, I maybe mean, it's because I have vivid memories. I seen it on TV back in the nineties, but mm -hmm. it was uh, it just it feels really nineties to me th that movie. Going back and rewatching yeah. it, uh, it definitely is. Um, but I just also uh, Child's Play has never really been my thing. Like most of the movies I've seen, maybe once or twice uh, at best. Um, 
which why it's actually fun going back and rewatching them. Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more of an appreciation than I've had for them before. Memory plays tricks. Mm. It does indeed. Uh, so the plot of this one is that... <laughs> So, so the, the legend of Chucky and, by extension, um, Tiffany uh, from Raid of Chucky have grown so so strong in this world, in, in the movie's world, that they are now making movies about them in the world. Because uh, we have this fake-out scene earlier on where you think they're killing this guy and it's actually, oh no, they're actually just puppets and this is a movie being made. And uh, Then we get weird because then we find out that Jennifer Tilly... Is playing herself in the movie, <laughs> and she is she is voicing Tiffany the doll, and mm-hmm. so in the world of Chucky, Jennifer Tilly actually exists, and she just <laughs> happens to look and sound the exact same as what Tiffany did before she died or before she went to the doll, and yeah. now so we have we have her playing both herself and playing Tiffany, and to yeah. make matters even weirder, Tiffany loves Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> and you know, idolizes her and like, oh, she's a star. She's so beautiful. She's a. Uh, I'll get. I'll give Tilly this though. Tilly did not like force them to hold back when it came to making fun of herself. Like that, she, like she has so much in this movie that you know treats her like she's like, you know, she's trying to diet but she can't, and or she's like a bit of a slut. She'll sleep with directors to get parts and stuff. Like she's constantly doing stuff like that, and the movie's constantly kind of like. Uh, or the other characters are constantly like pulling her up on it, and it's, you, she had a good sense of humor. You could tell that she wasn't up herself about doing this, which is nice. Yeah, I was about to bring up the same thing. Like they really like don't pull any punches with her, and I, I, you know, I didn't really have an opinion of her that much before this movie. I don't even really know much of, you know, I, yeah. like I know who she is, but I don't know a ton of her movies. But this like kind of makes me love her. Like, I, like I. <laughs> I like how you even, know game she is for all this. Yeah, because even the whole idea that like, her her core characteristic in this movie is that she's kind of a, a washed up actress who doesn't get roles anymore. Like she's like, oh, now I'm in a doll movie about a killer doll. Like that, that's yeah. kind of the the joke. And uh, so the fact that she's willing to make fun of her own career and kind of do all this is yeah, it's, it's a good sport. Um, do I think this was the right direction for the movie series to go in? I'm not <laughs> sure I do. Uh, it feels very Scream Three to me. And I do not like Scream 3. Now, Scream 2, of course, did have the whole movie within the movie thing happening, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And funnily enough, we've not done the Scream movies yet. We'll do that at some point. It'll happen. But, you know, like... But Scream 3 was the, the step too far. Scream 3 was, you know... And this isn't as bad as Scream 3. Don't get me wrong, it isn't. Mm-hmm. But it, it just... It almost started to feel like self-parody to me in a lot of ways. Like, oh, yeah. Obviously, Bride of Chucky was a funnier movie. It was more of a black comedy than it was a horror film compared to the first three. Uh, but there was just a few things in this one where it went over a line even further where I went, okay, this feels just like it's kind of silly now. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and this is even, uh, this, this one moment's not even a spoiler. There's just, there's a moment uh, in the sort of last third of the movie where Chucky, upon like finding out something, does like the alpha thing from Power Rangers where he goes, ay, 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 and he just kind of <laughs> does that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? Like, it's, it's like, like Chucky will crack jokes. But that 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 felt out a character. It felt like you've softened them up too much for that moment. Mm-hmm. And just, there was a few things like that. And um, yeah. but my other big problem with this movie, the thing that I think really holds it back, is the goddamn kid. He is the worst. <laughs> I hate him with a fiery passion. Glenn slash slash Glenda is annoying. Mm-hmm. Has an annoying voice. That, that stupid high pitched English accent. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Billy Boyd, my fellow Scotsman, for providing that. You bastard. So, like, I, I just, he's so annoying. I hate him. I hate him from the, the, the get go. I hate, I hate everything about him. He's, oh, he's irritating. <laughs> Ch- Chucky himself often has some good moments, and so does T- Tiffany. Um, <laughs> and had you not had the kid, and it was just the kind of meta that's have some fun with all this stuff, even though it feels kind of cheap compared to the previous movies, um, you know, I'd, maybe I'd get into it a bit more. But I hate that <laughs> kid. I hate oh. it. Is such a bizarre uh like turn for them to take with the franchise like obviously you know bride ends with you know them having a kid and stuff so i i guess if you're continuing that it's natural to be like oh maybe we'll find out what happened to it but uh to make it this really like weird you know story about this kid trying to find his parents and not knowing who who or what he is and like struggling with uh gender identity issues it's yeah so you know 
Chucky's not the franchise I wanted to tackle the gender identity <laughs> uh, sort of theme. It, 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 and don't get me wrong, I don't think it ever really does anything uh, like offensive with it. Like I, I think yeah. it actually plays it relatively safe in that sense. It, does, it never like, um, although the made in Japan subplot. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't ever I, say that's offensive so much as it's just really stupid. Yeah, I wouldn't really call it a subplot. More like a a small running go- joke, yeah. maybe. Like, Basically, yeah, that that is stupid though. Yeah. Uh, also, Glenn... he was born. He wasn't made. Yeah. <laughs> like... Glenn. Because it says uh, made in Japan on his wrist, which apparently he just got from his father, Chucky, because he has that in his wrist. Um, He thinks he's Japanese, so he's (laughs) learned Japanese, and there's little moments where a little Japanese musical play where and it'll sort of pretend it's a samurai film for a little bit, and it's just kind of like, this is stupid. (laughs) When it gets to the end of the movie, and there's like a standoff, and it's like, you know, close up of the eyes, and the Japanese music's playing, and, you know, know, that that sort of uh, the woodwind instrument you always get. Uh, like it, it just like this is goofy as shit and <laughs> like sure Braid of Chucky wasn't dead serious by any means but it never felt like it went down this kind of path where it was I just felt like it was pandering to its audience like mm-hmm. oh here's something really silly this will be goofy won't it yeah yeah it's it's really stupid but uh, I gotta admit like it did kind of make me laugh pro- like for the wrong reasons I suppose like I'm not laughing because it's a clever funny joke I'm laughing because it's like what are they doing <laughs> like, yeah. this is insane but, but I mean at the same time I'll give them that though it maybe not how they intended but they are making me laugh and keeping me interested I guess I, I guess that I'd sum it all up by saying this is where Chucky jumped the shark oh yeah right yeah. this is the jump in the shark movie uh, and you know, the but, funny thing is, it's written by the same guy who wrote the previous four. In fact, he also directed this one, which was a first. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, it, I'll always give you know people credit for this, though. If you are going to you know jump the shark or you know make a failure, uh, at least do it in an interesting way. Like you know, I'd much rather you know have this than just like a real boring like all right now we're just you know going by the beats and it's just getting like worse and worse or you know we've seen that with like a lot of other um you know horror franchises where it just slowly starts to go downhill at least they're going out with a bang at this point yeah i i I do want to emphasize that i I don't hate this movie i don't think it's the worst Mm -hmm. thing ever i actually think it's it's you know it's like it's okay it's kind of in that mediocre range and there are some little things i like there's some lines from chucky that i like uh the deaths are kind of hit and miss honestly despite the fact that i like what happens to some of the like the characters and the, the deaths the uh the budget and how they've done it makes it feel kind of off like you know there was a, a yeah. decapitation at one point where i felt like it just looked kind of wrong and it yeah. like, it just kind of like popped off the head like off, off the neck as if it was nothing and i'm like no there should, there should have been some tension there <laughs> there's, there's definitely some like uh um some early signs of like uh early cgi in this movie that doesn't hold up very well and the fact that it's a little 2004 it shouldn't have been early cgi anymore but it, it kind of is because mm-hmm. it's a low budget movie and they're, they're you know that's i don't know it's just, some of the moments like that feel a little bit off so so there's a lot of yeah. little things going against the movie and um, a couple of big things going against the movie <laughs> but it's, it's not painful to watch and jennifer tilly is yeah. f- kind of fun in the movie uh, and then you have chucky and tiffany who are also mostly pretty fun uh mm-hmm. the, whenever the kid comes up though it you know and I, it's also kind of weird because as much as this is a good thing because i hated him it was kind of mm-hmm. weird how it was really focusing on the kid and then when he does find him it he kind of just is in the background for a lot of the movie after that well chucky and tiffany are doing their thing and trying to yeah. you know once again get into some human bodies He's there in the beginning, and then pretty much, I would say, maybe like the first third of the movie, and then disappears, it feels like, pretty much right up until like the end. Yeah, he just sort of stands around uh, watching what's happening and just kind of reacting occasionally, but not really doing much. Uh, And I think that's maybe the other sort of just sort of pacing problem in the movie, or not pacing, but... uh, like the, the the drive of the story, they're, they're kind of just hiding in Jennifer Tilly's house for the majority of the film. You know, they're not really... Mm-hmm. You know, whereas Brady Chucky was this road trip, they're trying to get somewhere, there's a goal, they're constantly doing something. Whereas yeah. this was more, we're in the house and we're just kind of, you know, taking opportunities as they arise, kind of thing. Yeah, the, yeah, there isn't, like, a great focus to it, really. It, it seems like a lot of it is just, you know, fodder for jokes yeah. and... 
these one-off kind of things. It's, it's, but... it's almost like it's more of a, a 90 minute sketch starring Chucky <laughs> than it is like an actual proper movie with Chucky in it. Yeah, I can see that. You know, so... Yeah. Um, I don't think it's the worst thing ever, like I said. It's just, mm-hmm. uh, there's definitely a lot of things that kind of keep pulling it down, and I really hate Glenn slash Glenda. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, oh, which, by the way, <laughs> we, see, we see Tiffany boobs in this. She pulls down, <laughs> we get plastic boobs. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> we did not need that, thank you very much. Uh, anyway, so I, I'll give the spoiler warning so we can talk a bit more freely about uh, the mm-hmm. stuff that happens and we want to talk about the ending and all sorts. Um, so, so young, so young Glenn doesn't mm-hmm. want to be a killer. Uh, mm-hmm. He he has these nightmares though. He's never met his parents. Like so, some idiot English guy, which is why he's got a British accent. Uh, uses him as a dummy and pretends he's a ventriloquist, but it's a very impressive act because of course he's just talking on his own. Yeah. Um, and he keeps him in a cage, and you know he always pisses himself. And but then, then he sees like you know that this you know you know coming movie like they're, they're making other mm-hmm. movies on TV. And you see the you see the dolls, and he's like, oh, it's my parents. I must travel to America to to meet my parents. <laughs> and he, you know he hitches a ride. He gets himself posted there. Uh, mm-hmm. They kind of just gloss over how this is all like being done, which is, yeah. I'm honestly okay with. I didn't really need to see him sort of mm-hmm. work out all the kinks of this plan but he, he, he gets there um and he wakes his parents up because obviously his parents did die <laughs> at, the, yeah. at the end of the last movie <laughs> basically he just he has the amulet which he had at birth and he mm-hmm. says the little thing over the over them in the movie studio and they wake up and mm-hmm. i don't know if continuity wise this this works really so uh here's my question and yeah i apologize if i missed something but does that mean that they were the actual dolls well that's they're not what just like that's what i was going to say because okay <laughs> I, I would assume these are just movie props that have been made yeah. <laughs> so why, why why are they waking up inside these dolls and why does that little incant because that, that little ritual that little uh thing he says yeah that's not specific to them that's just the general thing you would say if you were doing this this thing so why does yeah. it specifically bring them into the dolls? <laughs> yeah, so, isn't it supposed to just be, like, you, it's supposed to be used to transfer your soul into something else? <laughs> so I, I guess from all this, the only way it's explainable, I suppose, is what you just said, is if it is the original <laughs> dolls that they actually went and got them. And But Tiffany was burned, and Chucky actually oh, yeah. uh, was only just shot a bunch of times, which, honestly, that's actually another problem I have, not with the last one and this one, is that they seem to have forgotten just how much punishment Chucky could take. Because in the first like two three movies, he gets mutilated and he's still a walking skeleton and he's like melting and he's still coming after them. Uh, yeah, yeah, in this movie, he gets like an axe to the head, or Tiffany gets an axe to the head and just that's mm-hmm. her dead. And it's like what? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> like he was like a Terminator in the first movie. You, you, you kind of neutered him a bit over the over the years, but whatever. <laughs> um... Yeah, I the. Well, I mean, my first thought in my mind, uh, not, not that it probably makes any sense or anything, but if it is something where at first they're in the bodies of these dolls and, you know, I forget the rules that they set forth, but I believe if you don't transfer your soul in a certain amount of time, you are basically stuck in the doll and then, you know, you see the dolls kind of become more human-like. Uh, I don't know if it's just in these later movies, they've been the dolls for so long at this point, they they are basically like the body of a human now instead of, you know, an indestructible doll that can go forth or Oh, I see. So you, you but... think they're actually weaker because they're more human in sight? That's the only, like, headcanon okay. I can try okay. to make sense of it, but I... I think I that mean... is a reasonable guess. It's something that they never actually thought about, and they just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's no hint of it at all in the movie or anything. Yeah, so that's that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, solid attempt. Solid attempt, I'd say. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Jennifer Tilly's like a you know down and out actress. She's je- jealous of Julia Roberts. She's mm-hmm. her assistants like faking all of her fan mail so she doesn't mm-hmm. feel you know depressed about herself. Yeah, she's trying to get a a role in a new Bible epic by Redman. Yeah, who who's also played himself. Um, I only know <laughs> that because he's credited as Redman, and you know yeah. obviously that's his actual name. Like I, I would never have known who this mm-hmm. was. Uh, but yeah, like I said, oh, you don't remember. Uh... 
uh, the, him and uh, I think it was Method Man had uh, some movie about smoking weed and they could see like the ghost of their friend or something. How high? I think. No, I did not. Uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they also had a show on Fox called Method and Red for a while. <laughs> not, not, not that. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, so speaking of Jeff Hortelli, like, having, like, fun, you know, letting them, like, you know, write just anything about her, like, mm -hmm. she says, oh, there's a role here for the Virgin Mary, and her assistant's like, goes, Pfft. it's like, yeah. what's so funny? It's like, Dun, nah, nothing. It's a, um, and, you know, that, that's kind of, and it becomes a bit of a running gag, because she, she ends up wanting to sleep with the director to get yeah. the role. Which is an irony in and of itself that you're sleeping with the director to get the role of the Virgin Mary. I mean, you know, <laughs> like, sure, this is, it's kind of funny. Our limo driver's was, got a crush on her and, you know, yeah. all, all things are happening. And, uh, another, like, small running gag that I, I liked is uh, it seems like the only other movie people ever bring up that she did was Bound, which is, uh, I, I've never even seen the movie. I just know it's kind of infamous for having a like a lesbian sex scene in it, I believe. Yeah, her and uh, Gina like, Gershon uh, have a... Yeah. I've not seen it myself, but I, I, I just know who's in it. But she, she mentions her. That's, but that's why the thing is when Redmond brings it up, when she's got him over to seduce him to get the role, <laughs> he's like, she's like, oh, you've seen my movies, which one? Oh, Bound, oh, that was hot, that one. She's like, did you ever speak to Gina? And she like, to lead them on, she's like, oh, we're, we're still good friends. Very yeah. good friends. <laughs> Maybe I can call her and we can, we can hang out together, all three of us. Uh, dear. Uh, which I actually I like the idea that you know whether Gina's friends with her or not in real life the mm. idea that maybe at some point she's somehow seen this movie not knowing that line was in there and being like <laughs> what the hell is she implying hey what <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but yes yeah, so, so it's it's kind of this this almost comedy act of her trying to get this role mm. uh, with Chucky and Tiffany Tiffany makes them swear not to kill anyone because mm. they want to be better people for their child. Uh, mm -hmm. although Chucky's against it from the start but you know yeah. uh, so they're doing like uh, they're going into in like it's like AA for uh, killing which um, I, I think you brought up a good point earlier like oh this would be funny but maybe more as a sketch instead mm -hmm. of like a plot for a movie like it feels really sitcom-y it um, for as, you know for a plot of a horror movie it's kind of strange but yeah I mean it, there's some funny parts about it but yeah, I was mentioning when we say AA, we we're talking about she's got this book, this 12 right. steps of mm -hmm. getting over your addiction. Um, and, you know, but she has, like, you know, she ends up killing Red Man and breaking her thing. <laughs> Chucky, like, mm -hmm. takes Glenn out to kill the, the, the photographer who was trying to, like, snap photos, mm -hmm. who, by the way, got photos of him just masturbating because their plan in this mm -hmm. movie is to. <laughs> so so they want the well at first they want red man that turns into the, the lomo driver after red man gets killed by uh mm -hmm. tiffany but the the plan is to take their bodies for them to and then impregnate jennifer tilly so that we can have, they have a child to put to put glenn into that's that's mm -hmm. the plan uh <laughs> so he has to you know uh and there's a, okay i'll admit i did laugh at the joke where he's looking through the magazines when he goes to masturbate and He's like, nope, nope, too skinny, too this, too that. Mm. And then he gets to Fangoria, and it's like a woman <laughs> with her face ripped off, and he's like, yeah, this is the stuff, baby. Uh, that was kind of funny. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. give that some credit. Uh, so that's the, that's the plan. So we, we get Chucky masturbating into a cup. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, you know, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that uh, the photographer is played by John Waters, mm -hmm. which... It's uh, it's funny because the last movie, Bride of Chucky, I think we mentioned how there's a lot of, you know, like different horror references. Um, and it felt like, you know, even even though it's not like the best horror movie or anything, it felt like, you know, it came from a place that had like a lot of love, you know, for horror movies and stuff. Whereas this, it feels like it's doing the same thing, but with um, like really weird, obscure cult B movies like um. You know, obviously, like, if you're getting John Waters, he's kind of, like, the king of, you know, really, like, crazy, subversive, you know, um, type of movies. And then, you know, the whole thing with, like, you know, Glenn or uh, Glenda, that's, like, you know, I'm assuming they're, you know, intentionally kind of ripping off Ed Wood. And uh, I don't know, it just feels like there's a weird, like, they're trying to, like, homage these kind of, like, crazy B-movies. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, 
it's a, like it's a little harder to pinpoint some of that stuff because it's easy with Bride when it's like, oh, that's obviously a Jason reference, that's a Pinhead mm-hmm. reference or whatever. Um, but uh, here, I, I feel like they have like a you know, little references throughout to those kind of movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I guess we, you know, the movie goes on for quite a bit. <laughs> um, <with> jokes <laughs> throughout all this. They, they both have their, you know, I think one of the best lines actually. <laughs> that I like from Chucky is so they're fighting over if if Glenn slash Glenda is a boy or a girl mm-hmm. and like is it going to be a boy because of this I want this and then she's like it's going to be a girl because I want this and mm-hmm. Glenn just kind of screams and is like does anyone care about what I want does no one want to hear what I think and then <laughs> Chucky just goes interesting <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. I, yeah. My bigger problem with Chucky in this movie, though, is that once it gets t- towards like, all the plan happening, and Jennifer mm-hmm. Tilly, of course, the pregnancy is like on super speed because movie yeah. reasons. Uh, and it's like she gives birth to twins, and that's, you know, it's when the second twins come out and he finds out, he's like, aye, 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 aye. Um, it it, <laughs> it kind of struck me as this weird. Um, like, again, you've turned, turned him into a punchline. This is all about the humor of the situation. It's, it's a sketch. It's like, oh, how does Chucky yeah. to react to having kids? And I feel like. Chucky from the older movies wouldn't have reacted this way. He'd just leave, probably, or <laughs> kill them all. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. Just the, the way the way he reacted here was kind of kind of weird in that sense. It, it's strange. He's really doesn't seem to be the focus of the movie. Like, if anything, I would say this is almost a Tiffany movie mm-hmm. with like you know Chucky. I mean, obviously you know because uh, Tiffany is doing a lot here, but also you know Jennifer Tilly and Chucky does seem to be sidelined a lot, which. Um, it, it does mean he gets like uh when we do get him it's usually pretty good like he'll have a pretty funny line here and there but then uh yeah it does feel a, a little weird like he's just kind of in the background a, a lot yeah, as he's, opposed he's, to other movies he's comic relief for a lot of it it really is mm-hmm. uh, oh he did just remind me actually speaking of jennifer telly poking fun at herself uh mm-hmm. when tiffany overhears that she's going to sleep with the director to get the role it's actually yeah. tiffany who says oh man she's such a slut <laughs> and that, that's really funny because you know it's her like that, that's the sort of thing where that wouldn't be that a funny line at all but because it's her playing both characters that's actually pretty funny yeah um but yeah so so so, so basically like the the the, the assistant jeffrey tilly's assistant comes by whilst they're enacting all their plan to uh which by the way in the first movie it wasn't that they had to transfer it into the first person who's seen them it's like, we've conveniently forgotten that rule over the course of like you know the last five I'm- movies I believe it's the first person they revealed their identity to, but then uh, I'm not sure who that'd be. In this I'm not movie. sure what counts in this case though, because they came back. Like, they were gone and came back. So actually, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's should, a good point. Should, should Chucky know. still be Andy? Really? I yeah, I feel like they just threw the rules out at this they point. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the, the the assistant uh, named Joan shows up mm-hmm. and I, I feel quite bad for her character because unlike a lot of characters in Chucky movies where you're kind of like, you know, they're kind of assholes, the ones who die and you're kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, you're, you're, you're okay with it. She was actually kind of an okay person. Yeah. Joan felt like a normal person who was trying to do her job, had to put mm-hmm. up with Jennifer Tilly's shit and yeah. did, did the best she could with it and then somehow she still gets set on fire. <laughs> and it just kind of felt like no nah, you know what I don't know if I needed to you know uh, by the way Britney Spears got killed as well she got ran off the oh, road yeah. and her car blows up uh, we should mention that yeah uh, um, which yeah leads Chucky to uh, to say oops oh, yeah. I did it again <laughs> which is oh my god I mean, that, if, that, if that doesn't date this movie <laughs> it does date it it's like I mean I remember the reference but it just it feels so old now like saying that yeah if, like I I really would be interested if, um, like, a you know, teenager was watching this nowadays, if they would understand that reference. That's actually really weird. Like, with a teenager now... Like, I mean, they've probably heard of Britney Spears, but what would they think of... Because Britney Spears was around when we were teenagers, and that was, like, a, yeah. you know, she was the the pop icon of, like, mm-hmm. a, you know, that sort of time period. And I just... I wonder what a teenager thinks. Like, did, did they look at Britney Spears the same way that when we were teenagers, we looked at Madonna? Maybe, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I guess so. Yeah. Well, admittedly, Madonna had a probably a better later career than Britney's had. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know what Britney's done in the last ten years, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. Like, it's just, it's weird how that generational thing happens. Where, uh, you know, yeah. like, you know, to a generation, Britney Spears is 
like this much older person. You know, she's older than us, sure, but she's you know mm. she, she was big when we were young. Uh, yeah, so it's just, just kind of weird. Uh, anyway, where was I? I going? don't. I don't know what the what the young kids are thinking now nowadays, and quite frankly, I don't want to know. They're into the Kesha. I think that's what they're into now. Okay. Well, and the and the uh, who else is big? Uh, Swift, Taylor Swift. People like her. Go. I couldn't name you a single song by Taylor Swift. I wouldn't recognise any of them if I heard it. But I know <laughs> she's the she's the she's the hot artist right now. Everyone's everyone cares. Billions of downloads and stuff on day one of new <laughs> albums. And you know when a new album's out because everyone else won't shut the f up about it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'll so. I'll, uh, I'll say I do think those people are uh, are are talented. I, I do feel like uh, I have no ill will. Like I'm making yeah. fun because I, I don't really know much about them, but like I I have no ill like thoughts about them or their music. I'd... Like it's not for me. I'm like the kind of dude now where like I I feel like this is the kind of thing my dad used to do, but like I'll you know, go to a store or something and I'll hear a song and I'll be like, oh, who's this? And then, you know, someone will be like, oh, it's like Taylor Swift. I'll be like, oh, I like it. And like, it's five <laughs> years old. Like, I've, 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 I've done that. I, well, not Taylor Swift, but I've done that where like I'll hear a song and like, I'll be like, oh, that sounds quite good. What is that? And it'll be someone well known that I've heard of, but wouldn't have known any of the songs. And it'll, yeah, it'll be like three or four years old. Like I'm so behind the, the times with it. Um, I did that with a, a stereophonic song actually a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. I heard um, the one about the train. I can't remember the name of it now. I know I could I could find it if I went looking for it now. Mm. But uh, it's not, uh, yeah, so it's about something summer September on a train. The, the music video is on a train. Anyway, okay. I heard I heard that like, playing like oh uh, the theme song for um uh. I was gonna make a joke, but I forgot the name of the movie. With Chris Evans on the train, was it? Chris? Oh, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, very <laughs> good. A theme song from Snowpiercer. You butchered that joke, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you butchered it. Um, but you know, like, and I was like, "Oh, what's that?" And like, Stereophonics. And the funny thing is, is I knew Stereophonics. Like, I like some mm. of their old songs, and somehow I just didn't know about this. And I was like, "Oh, this is quite good." And when I went to like go and listen to it, like at home, and like you know, get get a hold of it, I'm like. Wait, this has been out for four years. <laughs> Shit. Well, maybe if uh if we get enough Patreon money, maybe we can take a trip to uh Coachella and just <laughs> ask everyone who's uh performing. <laughs> like, who's that on stage? They're they're swell. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Call me, maybe. Well, that's because you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it broke down the barriers of even like my like pop culture or at least not pop yeah. culture because i'm pretty up in pop culture but my music culture like barrier mm-hmm. like it even got through that because no one could shop about it for it's you know it's it's <laughs> it's time oh that's like six years ago now it's been quite a while but um yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, we should go off this tangent of uh mm-hmm. how little in tune we are with the the, the modern music now, uh, if I do have one complaint, and you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but the movie is really crazy, but the kills really aren't. Like, mm. they're not... The, first of all, I, I would say there isn't a ton of kills. Um, and it, Honestly, it kind of feels like uh, the characters are supposed to be killers, and they're dealing with their killing addiction, so we have to have them kill things by default, yeah. rather than because they're excited to let's do some fun death sequences, and let's do mm-hmm. this, this, do yeah. that. The only one that I kind of liked was the photographer's uh death because mm-hmm. he had the acid in the face and that that was kind of an okay effect like that looked okay yeah i, I thought at first it was a little cheesy cgi but then uh it looks like kind of after that initial like burning through uh it, it looked like uh i'm assuming they did practical effects once he's actually kind of grabbing at his face it's like melted and stuff and that looked pretty cool yeah they did a mix um yeah. Yeah, so I, I was getting to something. Oh, yeah, so Joan comes over, gets set in fire, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and it looks like it's Tiffany, but then Tiffany walks in, and she's, like, in shock. She's like, what did I miss? And it's actually Glenn, who has decided that he is Glenda. He's got a wig on, looks a lot like his mother. Mm-hmm. Um, And he's talking about how he's a lady. And it, <laughs> it uh, I don't know. That, that's where the movie just kind of went off the rails a little bit. Uh, <laughs> although, my favourite scene in the entire film actually comes just after this. The, the, mm-hmm. I, I think there's one genuinely fantastic scene in this, and I like yeah. it a lot. It's when they go to do the ritual, the police are arriving, 
and Chucky actually has this speech. He has this monologue. Mm. He, he makes this decision mm. where he's like, you know what? I don't want to be a human again. Which is funny because he spent like yeah. four, four and a half movies trying to be human again. Mm. But he's like, like if I'm a human again, I'm going to get old and I'm going to die. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not going to be able to get up anymore. And like, you know, I'm an infamous killer. Like, I'm, it even says mm. slasher. I'm one of the in- most infamous slashers. I have a legacy. People care about who I am because I'm Chucky the Killer Doll. I yeah. love being Chucky the Killer Doll. God damn it, I'm Chucky. <laughs> and yeah. It's actually this kind of like, oh man, see if they'd built the entire movie around the idea that Chucky's going to go through this arc and he's going to decide, you know what, no, I like being this. I'm not going to try anymore. This is um, this is yeah. me. Like, it's like, That's actually quite a good little story you could be telling. Um, and I like the scene itself, but the movie doesn't really build up to it. It just kind of does it in that scene. Yeah, it definitely stands out as a, as a high point. And yeah, I would love to... Uh, if this was something where they were going to keep going with the franchise, which, I mean, they obviously do later, but, you know, it kind of is a, a long while before you get another movie. But uh, it would have been interesting to see them do other ones in this vein where it is just Chucky now and he's just like, screw it. Like, I'm sick of, you know, trying to get a new body now and I am going to just be this. I'm going well, to <laughs> accept fair, what I am. And th- Doesn't that, like, I mean... I, but, uh we'll find out for sure when we watch Mm -hmm. the next one again, but like, doesn't this just still stick anyway? Like, even if it's been a long time, like, Mm -hmm. is he trying to be in a human body again, the next movie? I can't remember if he is. Uh, I thought that was, uh, part of it, but, uh, it has been a while since I've seen that one. It is newer, but maybe you're just assuming that because that's what most of the plots were for most Mm -hmm. of the films. Yeah. So, but, uh, it, yeah, so so, uh, I, I hope it sticks. I hope when we watch the next one, I hope he's not trying to be human again because I actually really like this choice. I think it's a really smart mm-hmm. move. Yeah. Because it stops the rest of the films just being the same as the ones from before. It's like, okay, what's he doing now that he just wants to kill people? Um, mm-hmm. And it's almost like a statement. It's almost like Chucky himself. It's like a meta comment on the movie. It's like, yeah, this movie's kind of not what I'm supposed to be. I should yeah. go back to my own sort of stellar movie. And sure enough, the next movie was kind of a back to the basics. Let's do a horror story again with mm. chucky so you know but i like this scene i like I like what it does i just wish the movie actually built up to it rather than just kind of introducing it here but i did like it mm. uh so so the movie keeps going and uh we think we basically like she gets rescued we think chucky's chucky's been hit so they think he's dead we know he's not really though but mm-hmm. Tiffany gets taken... Oh, Tiffany, sorry. Jennifer Tilly gets taken... They're actually really similar names when you think about it. Uh, but Jennifer gets taken to the, uh, the hospital and she's had twins at this point. So there's twin babies kicking around, uh, which will be seen soon. Uh, they're, they're keeping her from them just now because she seems a little bit crazy because she, she's telling them this story about these killer dolls. <laughs> so it sounds a bit wacky. Um, but of course, uh, Glenda and Tiffany are under the bed. They're there. And then Chucky comes hunting for them and he has the shiny moment where he he, <laughs> he has the axe going through the door and then they play it with a joke because he's, he's looking through the door just like Jack Nicholson in the shiny. He's like, hmm, I can't think of anything I could say right now. <laughs> I, I do like that it, the series is becoming this weird, like, yeah, we're, we're just going to joke on <laughs> other horror movies. Uh, I don't know. It, it makes for some uh, some nice references, I feel like. I like it to a point, but I, I kind of yeah. wish that, like, like I say, I think this movie went too much down the comedy route. I was, I mean, I don't know what to expect from the next one, but I was really happy that it was going back to at least trying to do a more serious horror Chucky yeah. again. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but yeah, so yeah, so he kills Tiffany. <laughs> Chucky kills Tiffany because he's pissed that she wanted to leave him because that was what happened mm-hmm. just just before they left the house. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't want kids. I'm being a doll, god damn it. And then she's like, well, I'm leaving you and I'm taking the kid. So you get pissed. That's why he's chased after with the axe and he's killed her. Uh, and this is where we get the stupid standoff between him and Glenn, who, <laughs> who is once again acting Japanese. He even speaks Japanese a little bit. And he, you know, he, he has this, you know, this, this one-on-one fight with Chucky. Thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> it looks pretty bad, uh, especially when he does that, like kind of slow mo backflip thing, and it was like, oh, this this really does not look well. Yeah, and, what, uh, what, what, what was yeah, what was the thinking with this? It's just stupid. Uh, it's just as stupid as it, it gets. And it, and it's really strange because um, uh, that's one thing that we've been really positive on the series, like 
you know, pretty much all throughout was that, you know, the dolls always looked pretty good. Like, uh, yeah. So it, they, it they, good. they knew what they could and couldn't do with them, and they mm-hmm. used, you know, they played to their strengths. Whereas this one, I felt there was a couple of moments, especially this one, where they, they sort of did more. But, you know, they used a bit of CGI, and it was kind of like, oh, but part of the charm yeah. of this is that they were always physical dolls. They were always there. Yeah. So. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a little, um, I don't know, anticlimactic, I guess. I yeah. mean, I'm not sure where else they would have gone with it, but I don't know. It, it wasn't very exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it basically just ends with uh, Glenn like ch- killing Chucky and chopping off his head and his arms, and he's just a yeah. stump there. Um, but then we find out that uh, Tiffany did, in fact, go and save Jennifer Tilly. Mm-hmm. We cut five years ahead. We find out she has twins. You know, she has a little boy and a little girl who both have the red hair, of course, because Chucky has red hair, uh, mm-hmm. naturally. Um, <laughs> and if we find out in this scene that it is actually Tiffany who's taken over Jennifer Tilly, and she kills her new assistant because she... She's too scared of her daughter. Her daughter's apparently really creepy, and we see her like the daughter just staring through the, the window. Um, and then yeah. we find out, of course, the boy is uh, Glenn, like Glenn's inside. And there's a, it's actually kind of awkward because they've dubbed the, the English accent <laughs> over this little kid speaking, and it looks yeah. kind of off. But um, he gets a present for his birthday, you know, and uh, it's Chucky's arm, and the arm goes to grab him, and it you know, ends with Chucky's laugh as it cuts to black, and that's the mm. end of the movie. Um and okay sure i mean i I, I honestly the ending just kind of left me feeling like yeah okay i it's i feel like i don't know maybe it's just because the movie wasn't that strong but i i was having fun for a lot of it up until a point and you know maybe it's just that the joke starts to wear thin at that point but yeah by the end you know it's kind of like all right I, i i get what you're doing and what you accomplish but i'm a little checked out now like I say, I think that's a symptom of it feeling more like a sketch or a couple of yeah. sketch ideas uh, rather than a movie because when it gets to the third act and it's trying to have like this resolution and it's like trying to have, like, oh, we're supposed to care that the son, who's not a evil killer, even though he did like go nuts and set someone on fire, let's not forget that. Uh, he, like He's like standing up to Chucky and it's like, well, yeah, but he's so annoying and like I don't care about this <laughs> resolution because I, I never really cared about him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the, the, the flash forward's okay. It's like, it's like whatever but um it, it doesn't really make you that excited for like oh my god i can't wait to see what the next one's gonna be about if they're gonna resolve this or blow blood it's kind of like all right so that's the ending yeah um so you know the next one obviously has nothing to do with these kids mm-hmm. or anything in it and then i don't know if they'll maybe they'll, they'll prop up and curse a chucky because they'll be a lot older now you know mm-hmm. they're like five and well i'm gonna say it's five years ahead so they'll be five in 2009 so now they'd be about 14. Then I guess we'll see. I don't know. kind of hope not. I mean, they could do something <laughs> with them, I suppose. Like, if we have these two evil kids, like, that could be something. But uh, it doesn't seem like it from the trailers and stuff. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like Kurt, uh, not Kurt, Seed of Chucky is, is a really weird experiment film that feels more like a sketch comedy. Mm. Um, I really like. I don't have the worst things to say about it, but a lot of it just feels like these weird choices that I don't really want in a Chucky movie. Yeah, but. they. Uh, I I think it's. I I think they're funny and they're interesting and in how weird they are, but yeah, I don't know if it's the best place to utilize them. I, again, I'm glad it exists, but in it's not something like. Um, you know, I don't want to see more movies like this. You know, like I, I am kind of glad that you know the next one gets a little more back to basics. Because but... I think compared to the last one, which obviously had some of the humor in there, um, mm-hmm. like it, it's. I mean, even if it didn't work a hundred percent of the time, it's it still operated under the assumption that you cared about the human characters, mm-hmm. and it still operated like okay, we've got heroes who we want to survive this, and maybe you didn't really feel like you did care about them, but it, at least the movie at least. Uh, worked under the the um, assumption that you did and because of that it took it at least somewhat seriously because there was kind of stakes whereas here because it's like jennifer tilly it's like this weird mm. well this is just a joke anyway <laughs> so yeah like of, of course she's safe and even if she dies it's like well <laughs> whatever <laughs> like again it's just a punchline to the joke if she gets killed like if we see yeah. tiffany kill jennifer tilly that's just a really funny meta thing so it's, it's you know it never has the stakes or the drive that uh that even the last film did 
Uh, and certainly not like uh, the first couple did with uh, Andy actually being under threat and actually wanting them to survive. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so no. For me, I, I still think it's pro- probably the weakest, although I think it's closer to Child's Play 3 than I maybe mm-hmm. would have said before I rewatched both of them. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if I had a choice, like it's Friday night and someone was like, hey, do you want to watch Cedar Chucky or Child's Play 3? I might go with C, just... Because it's a, uh, I don't know. I, I want to know what, what, what this person has went through in their life that the option they give you <laughs> on Friday night is Seed of Chucky or Child's Play Three. I don't know. I'd like to meet this man though. Uh, <laughs> it sounds interesting, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's uh, I, I'm not in a rush to rewatch it, but it's a, uh, it's a weird, <laughs> fun little movie. Okay, um, so I guess we'll rate the rate the film at yeah. ten then. Uh, so Tim, what would you give Seed of Chucky out of ten? So I think I'm gonna give it a five point five. Um, you know, because uh, again, you know, probably a little rep- repetitive, but I I I do like the weird odd choices, but I don't think they equal a good film uh, at all. Uh, Fair, but that. Uh, but it is uh, interesting to watch. Uh, there were some genuine moments where I did laugh, um, and uh, and then there were, but definite moments that I didn't like or, you know, thought were unnecessary and kind of a weak ending. Yeah, uh, yeah. For for me, I like Chucky most of the time. Tiffany was mostly pretty good as well. Some of the Jennifer Tilly stuff I did enjoy, but that was the stuff that felt more like a, like a sketch. Like this is a funny idea for a, a joke mm-hmm. rather than an idea for a movie. Um, I really like that scene with Chucky deciding that he just wants to be the doll now. I like that. I hope that sticks with the next movie. I can't remember if it does or if they just forget about it. Um, but we'll find out uh, when when we get there. But so, um, I like those scenes. But kills aren't that interesting. Like you said, the ending is not that good. Um, honestly, none of them. I mean, even the last one, I thought like the ending was probably the weakest part. Like you know, yeah. the, the journey was really good, and then the ending was kind of just whatever. Um, three as well. You know. Honestly, one and two, it's, it's as far as like the last like twenty minutes of those movies go, those are definitely the strongest endings. Like they have like mm-hmm. you know the bit in the factory with the toys, or the bit in the first movie where he's like this Terminator coming through the house. Like yeah, you know, they have really good final kind of uh, sequences. But um, and then uh, but Glenn and Glenda is just so goddamn annoying. I hate <laughs> I hate that character with a passion. He's just, he sounds annoying. He looks mm-hmm. annoying. Everything about him is annoying. Uh, so. But like I say, it's not the worst thing ever, and mm. it's so I'm I'm going to sit on a straight five, which isn't actually that much lower than you, but that, that's kind of where I feel like there's, there's there's definitely things in there to enjoy, but there's a lot of things that drag it down. So yeah. five out of ten. The one thing I will say for this franchise is I I find um you know well. Let's leave out the the next movie now since we haven't reviewed it yet. But uh, mm-hmm. at, at least these, you know, just these first four, uh, I find all entirely watchable. Like it's, you know, I think it's a pretty consistent franchise. Like it, even though, it is. I mean, like three and C do dip, but the dip yeah. isn't like ultra dramatic. Yeah, it, it's not like uh, you know, I don't want to go into details for other franchises uh, that we haven't done yet. But there are definitely ones oh, yeah, we'll where sa- it, we'll save those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there are ones where it's like okay i kind of wish this you know installment didn't even exist because mm. it's you know horrible or does damage to the franchise and and you can say this one Which, maybe I mean, did damage but like it, it, well i mean it, it has stayed dormant for maybe in fact i think the gap between this and curse was the longest gap they've ever had oh yeah uh you know because three to uh braid was um that was like 92 so that was like that was only four years no six years um yeah. and then braid to seed was six years but then seed mm-hmm. to curse that was uh nine years yeah so that was the longest that ever went and maybe that's why is because that was kind of seen as a weird failure mm-hmm. um and it obviously curse did go direct to video but kind of funny thing is though is that post 2010 we're back in a world where direct to video for selling for horror can actually not mean bad it may actually be good in those conditions because you can make a good low budget movie uh yeah. and put it out that way uh, so, so many great films have, I mean there's been a lot of bad ones as well but so many great films that we've done over the last couple of years that have been straight to VOD have been you know good good little low budget movies so um, 
But there you go. So that is Seed of Chucky. We'll be back, of course, with Curse uh, before October because we want to have it, have it out of the way before we get to the, the, the new one uh, next month. So speaking of October, though, uh, it is the Octoberthon, and that means a bunch of different things. It means that we are doing a lot of extra episodes. Uh, it's looking like four a week, possibly more, <laughs> if, we, if we fit in extras. Um, so there'll be a lot of ones coming out in October. Uh, it does mean that we're going to take the first week of November off. Uh, so we'll take one week off, and then it'll be back to the usual two per week um, after that. So that's the, the idea. Uh, the other thing that's happening because of this is every month, of course, you've heard me promote the Patreon vote that we have, where patrons that are $5 and up get to vote in one episode per month. Uh, there's going to be two of those for patrons, uh, th- which is up now. So you vote throughout September for the movies in October. Uh, there's two for the patrons. Uh, one is Classics, which features Phantasm, The Thing, and The Shine, and The Omen, so you vote on that. The second vote is Knee High Mischief, which has got <laughs> the Ghoulies, Critters, Gremlins, and Puppet Master in it. So that's vote number two for the patrons. Are you sure that one's not the classic? Fairly certain. <laughs> Fairly certain. And then the there's a third vote, though, and the third vote is actually kind of special because we don't normally do this, but because it's October, we have a public vote, so the link for that one will be in the description below, and anyone can vote on that, and that is a werewolf vote, which uh, has Cursed, Wolfen, The Howling, and Werewolf of London uh, in it. And that's the 1935 Werewolf of London, not to be confused with another werewolf in London, which mm-hmm. you may know of. Yeah. And I've forbidden Pete from trying to campaign to get cursed. I know he won't stop talking this about is, it. But... This is reverse psychology. <laughs> Tim said he was going to campaign so that people would vote for cursed to piss me off. And I said, no, if you campaign, we're throwing the vote out and I'm just going to pick which we're doing. There'll be no campaigning. We are not allowed to interfere with the votes, Tim. That's the rule. Okay. You listen to me. You listen to me, sunshine. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not having we're not having hacking in our voting thank you very much i i agree that's why i'm gonna be on you all night and day making sure that you're not getting people out there trying to vote for curse like yeah. you want of thanks to everyone who's already voted it's been interesting <laughs> watching the votes come in uh th- th- this is kind of close uh th- there is one that's a couple of votes ahead but um we'll, we'll see what ends up winning uh, you have until the end of the month, by the way. That's the deadline in all these votes. It, all, it always is. It's always the end of the month. Um, so you can expect the winners of those three votes uh, as three of the episodes in October. You can also expect the new Chucky movie in October, along with the new Texas Chainsaw movie, along with mm-hmm. the new Saw movie that's coming out. Mm-hmm. And then we've got some other stuff planned, including a couple of classics, which will maybe mm-hmm. start some other long-running franchises. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Special things planned. We have, we have a lot planned. We have a couple of weird things planned as well. <laughs> a couple of oddities. Uh, but that is us. So thank you for watching. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. As we mentioned, Patreon, patreon.com slash TV if you want to get involved in all that. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching scary movies, and we'll see you next.